All right, let's talk about marijuana. I'm walking to a minefield now. Here we go. <laughs> and we're going to have Grace read the marijuana handout. And who knows about Mr. Mackey from South Park, right? All right, so Mr. Mackey tells you guys the drugs are bad today, right? By the way, before we start this off, let's say we're going to make a movie about marijuana smokers. It's a comedy movie. What are some of our stereotype skits and, and comedy uh, sketches going to be about in our movie? What kind of attributes are we going to give to the chronic pot smoker? How about some like memory stuff like, dude, where's my car? Dude, where's my keys at? Right? Is that true? Dude, how come you don't have a job? So I can't pass a drug test, dude, but I'm really good at playing video games and I smoke lots of weed. Any other comedy sketches that would be created along these lines? Another question for you guys. Um, is it appropriate for a 10-year-old to smoke pot? No, right? Why should a 10-year-old kid not smoke marijuana? I'm just curious. What? They're not what? They're still developing. Good. Another reason why a 10-year-old should not smoke marijuana. Yeah. Any other reasons? Okay. So here's my philosophy, if you all agree on this. A 10-year-old should not smoke marijuana because they're emotionally not able to handle it. It's going to impair their development. It's going to fossilize their uh, emotional development. Studies show that if you begin smoking pot at a young age, it seems to lower your IQ. Marijuana studies are always complicated. It doesn't seem to affect people after age 21. But smoking pot early seems to affect the IQ. We have amotivational syndrome. So the same reason why you guys say a 10-year-old shouldn't smoke pot is why I say the person in high school shouldn't smoke pot. You're not ready for it yet. This part of your brain, the prefrontal cortex, where you have the ability to become a chess player, thinking two and three and four moves ahead, instead of a checkers player, has not fully developed. If you notice where marijuana is legal, it's for 21 and older, just like alcohol. That's not an accident. There's a reason for that. So when it comes to smoking marijuana, my advice, and parents hate this, don't smoke until you're 21. Wow, I said it out loud, didn't I? Okay, don't smoke until you're 21. I didn't say ever. I said until you're equipped and able to handle it and can make a really good, healthy adult decision. Because deciding to smoke marijuana at a young age, oftentimes if you get arrested, remember, because marijuana is not legal for anyone in 21 and younger in Michigan, so being caught with marijuana can cause all kinds of legal problems. And trust me on this, Oftentimes, the system that's legal will do more damage than your pot smoking will to your future. All right? So let's get started on this marijuana handout. Go ahead. Can we all agree on that, please? All agree on that? Thank you. God bless America. Next one. Especially begin using it before age 21. Next one. Yeah, it removes that anxiety, removes that motivation, that drive to do things. All right, next one. Causes loss and decrease of emotional IQ. Yeah, I always tell my male clients, if you want to have a girlfriend, you want to have a really good emotional IQ, picking up people's you know, uh, secondary communication, nonverbals, their wants, their needs, their emotions, their tendencies. The best moms have really good emotional IQs. Look at a baby. The baby's nonverbal. They still know what to do, right? And it seems to be that cannabis abuse will remove that skill set. Next one. Lowers testosterone in males. Yeah, all my male athletes hate that part. It's actually true. If you have a couple that's trying to have a baby together, they always tell them the male do not use marijuana for a bunch of reasons. One is you know lowered sperm count, lower testosterone. Next one. So the marijuana in my high school when I was your guys' age was five percent THC. So five percent THC marijuana. And you guys have access now to 25% THC marijuana. Five times stronger. What's bad about something being five times stronger? Imagine your average beer is about 5% alcohol. And someone goes to a party and they're drinking a 25% alcohol content beer. They have two and you have two. How come the behavior is so different? Because there's so much more potency. Is that making sense? We're not comparing apples to apples anymore. You know, and now you add in the uh, wax and the concentrates, the E-pens, the G-pens, all that kind of stuff, 
be able to smoke wax. One of my clients was a Russian guy and he was involved in wax production and nitrous sales. And uh, one day his wax production facility blew up and my client blew up and he was gone. What does that mean? He was gone, gone. Like there's nothing of him to be put into a casket. So if you ever happen to have any friends that go on the internet and say, I'm going to start making some wax because I'm really, really smart, please remember my Russian guy story and say that's a really dumb idea because people can actually blow up and there's no one, or nothing left to be put into a casket. I'm sorry for being so graphic. Go ahead. Yeah, so you guys know what wax is, right? You've heard of this. So it's marijuana concentrate. They take the marijuana plant and they extract using a chemical method a concentrated THC liquid out of it. This looks very like a waxy substance. Okay, good question. All right, so moving on from wax and, and paranoia and all that kind of stuff, let's talk about number seven. But is that true though? Burning anything and putting it in your lungs, is that going to be healthy for you? We all agree that smoking cigarettes is bad for your lungs, right? So is smoking marijuana bad for your lungs? Right. If I give you guys organic broccoli, that's a very healthy thing. If I say, no, you can't eat it, I want you to dry it and smoke it, is that a good thing? So can we all agree you cannot dry and smoke any organic matter and say that's good for your lungs? We can agree on that, please? Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can eat it. I, it's not going to go in that direction. Look, my medical marijuana clients that actually use it legitimately do not smoke marijuana. They use a vaporizer or edibles. I'm just being honest with you guys. But there's a myth that marijuana somehow when it burns in, in, a, in a cigarette or a blunt that it's magically different than anything else that burns in a cigarette or a blunt. It's not. You burn anything as bad for your lungs. This is common sense, right? Okay. Next one. But Michigan passed a law that said that marijuana is legal. And if you're a DEA agent and you show up, what do they say to you guys? I've helped two clients that got caught with medical marijuana in a container with their medical marijuana cards. They both got pulled over in West Bloomfield. No, one was in West Bloomfield, one was in Birmingham. They're about 18 years old. They got a medical marijuana card. And the cop pulls them over and says, are there any drugs or weapons in the car? And my future client says to them, uh, there's no weapons in the car, but there is some marijuana. I have a medical marijuana card, and it's in a sealed container. And the cop pulls him out of the car, slams him to the hood, and handcuffs him. And my future client says, you can't do this to me. I have a medical marijuana card. You can't arrest me. And the cop goes, I'm not arresting you under the Michigan law. I'm arresting you under the federal law. I'm being serious with you. And they go off to jail, and they get a really good attorney, and for $5,000, the, the whole case goes away. But for most people who don't have $5,000 in a really wealthy family laying around, they kind of plead out and they say, you know what, I don't have the money to fight this thing. I'll just you know, sign and pay some fees and be on probation for a year. And that's not very much fun. So remember this, until the federal government legalizes marijuana, marijuana is still, it's called quasi-legal. It's like legal depending on where you're at and who you're seeing and what the cop's mood is that day. Because if a cop arrests you for marijuana, you can't sue him for that. Imagine if you're robbing a bank. Robbing a bank is a federal crime. And we're leaving the bank and we're robbing it. And a local cop shows up and we say to him, you can't arrest us for this bank robbery because it's a federal crime. And the cop says to you, what? You're really dumb at the law. I can arrest you for any kind of crime, federal, local, local or county, right? I just... Why well, I get in trouble for telling the truth? That's the only point in my life right now. I tell people the truth. They don't want to hear it. It's a weird place in my life, all right? But I'm just telling you guys the truth, right? Are we okay with that? Okay. All right. I don't want to lie to anybody in here. This is not the D.A.R.E. program, okay? We're just going to be talking amongst ourselves and you know, challenging some ideas and do some critical thinking. All right. Um, how about this uh, Peter Pan, number nine? And what's that in the very bottom? Give us a description of Peter Pan syndrome. It doesn't sound very good. Are, 
I have a friend named Trust Fund Paul. We grew up together. His dad uh, became a wealthy construction work, uh, uh, company. And Paul's father came from Poland. He was very, very rich. Not immediately, but later on, he became very wealthy. And he made up his mind because he had worked hard physically so much in his life. He wanted his daughter and son to never have to work a day for the rest of their lives. So when Paul turned 29 years old, he got a $300,000 house. He has a $40,000 car. He gets $3,000 a month for the rest of his life and all his bills are paid for. What do you think happened to Paul in a year based on this Peter Pan syndrome concept? Paul began smoking pot every single day, drinking beer, eating pizza and playing video games. Lost his girlfriend, gained a lot of weight. And so I came over to his house to do like a mini intervention. I said, hey Paul, you're like smoking way too much pot and how come you don't have a girlfriend? Paul says to me, because all girls ever do is complain about my pot smoking. Um, that's what they're supposed to do. Anyway, so with that being said, right? He says, I don't need them in my life. I feel really special from smoking pot. I go, Paul, we could go to Miami. We can actually get a personal trainer. We could have fun together. How come you don't want to leave this, this bedroom and go out? He goes, because I'm really happy smoking pot. Five years later, what's Paul doing? The same thing, no girlfriend, no interest, no hobbies. He hasn't even improved his video game skills, to be honest with you. So Peter Pan syndrome is real. It's, it applies to both boys and girls. I don't want anyone to get it. Uh, it's not fun to have it. And once you have it, uh, there's a lot of denial that goes along with it. Okay, and how about number 10? Yeah, I said it can be. Didn't say for sure, right? I said it can be. And the last part there, this young lady is crying. The little kid's crying. Why is that kid crying? All right, let's camp on that. Is that true or not? Yeah. Is Santa Claus real in this room? Yeah. What? <laughs> I don't want to hear about the flat earth stuff either, okay? So Santa Claus isn't real, and drugs and alcohol aren't your friend, right? That's our big takeaway from today. Is that fair? All right. That being said... Um, If you guys know someone has an alcohol or drug problem in your, in your school or even as a, a family member or a friend, how would you guys help that person? Yeah. What kind of meetings? Yep, AA and NA meetings, 12-step meetings actually help people. What else is helpful? A person that's abusing marijuana or alcohol, even on the weekends. How can you help them? Yeah, also having a mini intervention, have your other friends sit them down and go, hey, we're concerned about how much you're using. We're concerned about your behavior when you use. You guys are future leaders in this room. I hold you guys to a higher standard. If someone is wounded, don't leave them on the battlefield. If someone is developing a drug or alcohol problem, reach out to them, talk to them. You know, don't use shame and stigma. It's not productive. Ask them what's going on. Ask them how you can help. Get them to a counselor, get them to a peer mediator, get them to a treatment center, but don't leave them alone. Because oftentimes when people are abusing drugs and alcohol, there's so much shame and there's so much embarrassment, they begin to isolate and pull away from people. If you aren't strong enough to actually address that issue, they can get lost, all right? So um, is this information helpful to you guys? Okay, and so we, got, we say some time for some questions. So any questions out there? The best I can to answer any questions. Yes. This is not coming from a place of inches, but um, just so we're clear, you said that edibles are still harmful, right? Yes, they're harmful, but less harmful than burning things and putting it into your lungs. Okay. Yes. Yes. Good question. Any other questions? Yes. What the marijuana is. All right, so you kind of hear me dropping these little uh, tidbits, these little pearls of wisdom. When I say to you guys, oftentimes the system does more damage than the marijuana does. What am I trying to say to you guys in code? 
Marijuana has been illegal for a long time, right? And what's happened people that got caught smoking marijuana? They got arrested. They got charges. So your question is a really good question. Marijuana has problems with regards to physical, mental, spiritual, and legal problems, right? I've seen people not go to their school of choice because they got a marijuana possession charge. Is that making sense? I've seen marijuana begin to be a problem for people when they begin using it too young. So the answer to your question is that all drugs are, are different. Some drugs have medicinal properties. When marijuana can be used to help people and heal people, especially with serious physical conditions. But for the average recreational pot smoker or the person with a nonsense medical marijuana card based on their insomnia, if you get really honest about that, that's not a medical condition. And so whatever drugs get you high must be addictive. No drug will ever come out and they say, okay, this drug will get you high, but it's gonna be non-addictive. That's a lie and that's a myth. Whatever gets you high by its very nature has to be addictive because that reward feedback loop has to be in there. So when people tell you that marijuana is non-addictive are lying to you. They might mean like physically non-addictive, but mentally, physiologically, it's very addictive. All right, any other questions? Good question. Anything else? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Two of my clients decided to use edibles. Two of my clients end up in the hospital. Edibles are very unforgiving. I don't recommend them for anybody, especially an amateur drug user. Um, they'll put you in the hospital. They'll make you feel like you're psychotic. My client had a panic attack. Wealthy kid from West Bloomfield. His friend gave him an edible. He ate the thing. He thought he was going to die. All right. Yes, Lou. You talk about how, how use of drugs and alcohol can um, arrest emotional and personality development. Yeah, absolutely. So when you begin abusing a, a drugs or alcohol, especially at a young age, let's say 13 or 14 or 15, working at Brighton Hospital, I see a woman walk into the, to the hospital for an intake, right? She's dressed like she's in the 80s. Her makeup, her hair, her clothing is all 80s style. I don't judge anybody, but this tells me something very interesting. So I begin asking her, hey, when did you first really begin abusing you know, Xanax and Vicodin? Oh my God, when I was in 16 years old in 1985. People will actually fossilize. Their emotional development, where they're at in their lives, will actually be stuck in an emotional state. And so we have people at Brighton Hospital when I was working there that are 40 years old, but they behave like a 15 year old. And the reason why they begin abusing drugs and alcohol at age 15. The good news, if you leave that stuff alone, especially for 18 months, um, most people actually have a normal brain scan after 18 months. There are two exceptions to the rule. Abusing MDMA and abusing methamphetamine are very, very unforgiving to the brain. And some of my clients that have used those drugs for a period of time are never going to be normal. So all drugs are not equal. Some drugs are much less forgiving. Meth uh, and MDMA ecstasy, those drugs are really bad for the brain. So is DXM and robotripping, really bad for the brain. You don't bounce back from that. Oftentimes you will appear like you have autism. You can't pick up, your communication skills go away. You don't understand sarcasm, don't understand metaphors. It's a bad place to be when your mind betrays you. Right, any other questions? Yes. Because the people that I see that can't stop smoking marijuana are crying their eyes out in my office and they can't stop. You come in my office and you can't make your bed, you can't go to school, you can't stop smoking, and you're not Bob Marley. Because when Bob Marley smoked marijuana, his mom never cried and he could go to his concert on time. Okay, anything else? Sure, yeah, so I haven't used any drugs or alcohol in over 12 years now. 
you know. And so uh, I have a previous uh, abuse history myself. Uh, one of my close friends died of a heroin overdose. His name was Jerry. Uh, when he passed away, his wife, Kimmy, and I were very close. And uh, Kimmy called me on the phone and said that Jerry died of a heroin overdose. And I was like distraught and I was very upset, but I knew they was doing heroin. And uh, Kimmy goes, the story gets worse. I go, what do you mean the story gets worse? She goes, I'm pregnant and I'm doing heroin. So I said, I'll be over there in 40 minutes. I took her to her first NA meeting. And uh, I went through the pregnancy to supporting her and we got her sober, had a really good doctor. And I became the godfather to their child. So I was at St. Anastasia's Church in Troy for the Godfather ceremony, and Kim, Kimmy was still wearing her wedding band. And the uh, priest looks at me and goes, who are you? And I said, I'm the Godfather. Looks at Kimmy and he goes, where's the father at? And she goes, well, he can't be here today. So this priest being about 70 years old and not knowing what's going on, uh, grabs our, our, the baby and begins walking to the front of the church and says, I can't understand why the father of this Christian child is not here on this very important day and Kimmy loses it. And she grabs this arm and begins sobbing uncontrollably and says out loud in the middle of the church because he died of a heroin overdose. So I have what's called an epiphany in that moment, a sudden strike, striking of awareness. And I realized that addiction had killed my very close friend. Now this was very personal. I viewed it as a personal attack and now I want to get revenge. I made my mind at that point, I was going to go to graduate school and uh, become a therapist and an addiction killer. I did that. I went to U of M, graduated with a 4.0, and I'm a licensed to kill addiction killer. Somewhere if this has that kind of stuff. So there you go. I'm putting the book on addiction too. Thank you. My success is your success. All right. Any other questions? We're good? Okay. Oftentimes, the system has more damage than marijuana does. So in my opinion, it's a better thing. Watch this, I'll prove a point. Um, they did a study on people that have smoked marijuana, right? And so in the US population, it's a Michigan population from 18 to 40, they say about half the population has tried marijuana one time. And marijuana is illegal, which means that half the population in Michigan is criminal, but the law doesn't make any sense. Which one do you want? When you pass laws and your society is guilty of committing that crime, everyone becomes a criminal then, right? There'd be nobody left. If every person that smoked marijuana had to go to jail for it, you'd be surprised who'd be left in your community. I'm just saying. Yep. Um, what would you say to people who think smoking pot is okay if you do it only every now and then, or people who think that they're not addicted? Oh, if you say they're gonna be um, that's a huge ego, and that person probably will have a drug problem for sure. It's the ones that are cautious and are humble that don't seem to develop addiction. The ones that are cavalier and arrogant seem to fall pretty hard. So in my, my opinion, remember, this is your life. You only get one of them, and so use it very, very wisely. You know, heed my advice. Don't do it until you're 21. You can make a really good decision with a bunch of other people that are a lot smarter than you are as a teenager. Just saying. All right. Thanks for your time, guys. Call yourselves.